Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside the stadium, this is the Husker Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. Pass made, Stinson set left, Thomas Ayala not down, Ani Evans there, now the Huskers back row, Kubik, kaboom, Nebraska's ahead, it's 9-8, Big Red in the fourth, 9-8, Nebraska set four, up two sets, one. Thorne gets the shotgun snap, Huskers in a little pressure, Thorne gets hit, and goes down, sacked back at the 13 yard line, another three and out, coming up for the Black Shirts, fell Darius Payne's third sack of the season. Wow. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here's your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you, and welcome to our sit-down, monthly sit-down with Nebraska's Vice Chancellor, Athletic Director, Trev Alberts. If you want to be a part of the program over the next hour, here are the numbers, 402-413-2400. That works if you want to call or if you want to text in a question. We can certainly relay that on to Trev here tonight. Good to see you. Well, well, thank you it Greg. seems like it's been a while since we've had you on. Well, it has been a while, hasn't it? Late August. Yeah. We've had five football games since you were on. So let's start there. Your thoughts about Husker football through almost half the season at this point in time. Yeah, time moves quickly. Uh, uh, you know, it's been fun. It's been fun to watch the team, and 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 certainly in areas uh, we're all frustrated and and wondering why. In other areas, just really, really proud of the progress. And uh, you know, I really thought that uh, you know the last two games were really interesting. Those are two ranked teams and and very well thought of teams. I thought the team, you know, went down to Norman uh, without a whole lot to lose and and played well. And you know, that was a uh, for those of you who weren't there, I mean, that was one hot football game. And I thought our team held up really well. I'm just really proud of our defense. You know, I mean, there's certain parts that you can really learn about uh, in terms of effort, determination, and, you know, certain things aren't about uh, talent. It's about effort and will. And, and, and that defense has played so well. And you and I talked before the show started. You know, there's no Indomitian Sioux or Grant Wistrom, you know, but this is a team that plays together. They understand their role. Chins has done a great job. So a lot of progress in some key areas and then obviously some areas that have been a real concern and, and, and frustrating. But uh, proud of the effort, proud of the focus. Uh, we got a lot of work to do, um, but um, I think we're making progress. This is obviously a very, very important game and homecoming this week and uh, a lot of great quality opponents uh, that are still coming up. So we'll, we'll keep working and, and supporting Scott and the coaches and more importantly supporting these you know, these football players who, uh, you know, they, they deserve to be rewarded at some point based on all their effort. And probably need that, right? As a former yeah. player, you understand that if you don't get the fruits of a victory at some point, it gets tough to keep getting up. Well, the reality is this. I mean, uh, for those of you uh, who have played football, you understand that, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of laying it on the line and, and being willing to pay a price. And, and if you never get rewarded, eventually you start asking yourself whether it's worth it. And, uh, you know, I was, um, you know, this is going to sound a little bit odd, but uh, I was really pleased with what I saw from the reaction of the players after the Michigan State game. Um, There was general, um, anger's a little strong. uh, But what that tells me is, is first of all, uh, there's an emotional investment into what they're doing uh, that are all in. And um, when it hurts that bad, uh, you understand how important it is to them. And, and how much that they've invested in it. And so I thought the response was good. And obviously the response after such a tough loss is hard, but I think uh, generally the coaches have done a good job of getting them refocused for the next game. Um, this is a schedule that uh, there's a, a very small window and sm- a small margin of error. Uh, every game's winnable and every game uh, you know, we could lose. Uh, and so attention to detail and focus and discipline are gonna be critical. And those are areas that historically have not been our strong suits. And none of those have to do with talent. They all have to do with things that we can control. And so that's our focus. I want to ask you about the schedule. You had nothing to do with this schedule. By the time you got here in July, this thing was in the cement. Interesting because we played two home games. And it's going to be October here in a day. Yeah. And it's only two home games. That, that This seems odd. Does it seem odd to you? Yeah, it does seem odd. There was a lot of moving. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, I wasn't here. But we've moved some games. And I think part of it was, you know, we intended on being in Ireland for that first game. And so just a lot of things feel different and feel a little bit odd. Uh, You know, this is an interesting schedule and and certainly that impacts everything. You know, home games impact recruiting. It impacts um, um, 
a lot of great things happen at home games that are really important for for the future of the program. And so, uh, uh, playing at home is uh, you know the, we, the the biggest advantage we have week in and week out is is our fan base. And so, getting a chance to get back in Memorial Stadium. And so that's why I think. You have to be encouraged when you go on the road to Norman. You have to be encouraged when you go on the road against a rank Michigan State team that had played very, very well. I mean, went down to Miami and and dominated that game against the Hurricanes. So, you know, there were, there were portions of the game against Michigan State that I saw our team dominate in areas that I hadn't seen us do for a very long time. So very, very encouraging and, and, and proud of the effort. You mentioned home games are important to the program. They're important, I think, to all your programs because yeah. all your programs utilize home football games for recruiting. Oh, yeah, um, you know, I have to actually approve through compliance, and and uh, it's interesting. Uh, yes, uh, all of our programs, all of our coaches bring back alumni. They're bringing in prospective student athletes. We're bringing in donors. I mean, this is a, a full-on operation, and football is the catalyst to get done and a lot of things that that we're trying to do. So. Absolutely. Uh, football is very, very important to men's basketball, to women's basketball, to baseball, softball. Uh, and that's part of what we're trying to create here is, is all in, all of us, and helping each other create that culture of, of competitive success. Scheduling, I'm going to stay there because the last time we had you on, the announcement of the alliance had just come mm-hmm. out. Is there any progress in that? I've heard rumors, and I think the Pac-12 commissioner said we're looking at a model of eight conference games then one game against the Big Ten, one game against the ACC. Is any of that moving down the tracks at all from your standpoint? Yeah, I was in Washington for three days for uh, Bleed One AD meetings and Big Ten meetings uh, last week, early last week, and uh, uh, we did talk about the alliance. And, and um, you know, you always have to uh, uh, remember that when you read in, in, in the newspaper certain perspectives, we're all conflicted, we all have agendas. So the Pac-12 would like something to happen, the Big Ultimately, uh, the Big Ten will always be advocating for what's in our best interest. The, the issue and the challenge here is, is now that we've had some change where Oklahoma and Texas are going to the SEC and we've paused a little bit to college football playoff expansion, uh, the question is we need to understand more clearly exactly what um, – you know, all of the qualifications and, and, and what the uh, examination of potential playoff teams will be prior to making rash decisions. So um, while we're certainly not sure about how it goes forward, initially we were thinking eight conference games. It could be nine. We could stay at nine, pause, wait, Greg, until we understand what, you know, what it looks like, what an expanded playoff looks like. Um, I think you could see the SEC with, with an expanded uh, – a conference group go to nine games and so we'll have to I think we're going to be patient here and we're going to wait and see ultimately um, the alliance is a real thing I think it's going to really benefit Nebraska I think it's going to benefit the Big Ten Conference uh, I think it's going to help us when we're at the table in terms of helping to reframe you know what the Constitution looks like and what college football looks like um, uh, but whether it's nine conference games, eight, whether there's two alliance games or one initially, we'll have to see. Uh, what we do initially, Greg, may not be what we ultimately get to. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see, but no hard decisions have been made yet. Very good. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's our monthly sit down with Athletic Director Trev Alberts, 402 413 2400, the number to. Dot us up with a comment or question for Trev. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Plattsmith and Drew. Good evening, Drew. You're up with. Oh, hey, Trev. I have a question. So for going on four years now, we've lost games due to bad special teams, just really self-inflicted mistakes. Um, I guess my question is what should give the fans confidence that Scott's the right guy to make changes and to improve these things when, we haven't seen any improvement in those areas in four years, and he's had an opportunity to shore up special teams in the off season with coaching hires, and we've kind of just done the same thing over and over again and just delegating this out to assistants or analysts. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm just wondering from inside view, what are you seeing um, that should give us confidence that these things can get cleaned up so we can start winning? Because we should be 5-0 and right now if we had better special teams play. So thank you. I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, Drew, and and uh, I really appreciate the question. I appreciate you calling, and, and I don't disagree with anything you've said. Um, I think uh, I think if you ask Coach Frost and our coaches, uh, uh, we've all looked at the film and uh, agree that there would be a, a reasonable chance that our football program could be five and zero. Oh. 
Um, uh, I also think it's um, fair to ask the question, you know, uh, what should fan, give fans confidence that, that, that um, you know, that, that this staff can correct those issues within special teams. And that's our job. Um, I can't communicate what that is today. Uh, we're going to have to earn that. Coach Frost is going to have to earn that. Uh, the reality is, is there's a lot of opportunities to get that done. Uh, there has been some changes. You mentioned the analyst. We had an analyst last year. Coach Dawson is back this year who's handling special teams. And so, um, you, know, it, you know, we do have a focus in that area. I know Scott has a focus in that area. Uh, but until special teams change and improve, um, um, we have to earn that. And, um, you know, the other thing I think you have to, to think about a little bit is, you know, it's easy to say the, the whole offense isn't doing well. The reality is there may be a part of the offense that's not doing well. There's a lot of special teams that are actually doing quite well. Some of the blocking and, and, and coverage units when, when the ball's punted in the correct position. But we've had issues in kicking and we've had issues in receiving. And those are two very glaring and obvious things. And so... Uh, all I can tell you is I know that our coaches are working extraordinarily hard. I agree with you. Uh, there's been multiple years of it. We've had opportunities to correct it. It hasn't gotten done, and we've got several games here that are coming up that we're going to have to get it done, or we're not going to find ourselves winning the number of games that, that we all hope and anticipate happen. Drew, appreciate the call. Let's go to Omaha next. And Mike, good evening. Mike, you're on with Trev Alberts. Hey, Trev. Welcome home. I'm glad you're running the ship. I'm sure most Husker fans are. Uh, two quick questions. One, uh, <clears throat> I think you were supposed to replace the field turf last year. Is there any consideration to ever go back to grass? And two, uh, is there any way, I don't know if it's through who owns our rights to our games, whether it's our university or the, the networks, but to put, like, if somebody wanted to watch uh, – you know, a random 80s game, you know, a game from 1986 that you could put all those the catalog of games on like Husker Network and pay for it or uh, if there's any way of that possible. Uh, again, thanks again. Welcome home, Trev. Thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate you calling, and, and uh, it, it's great to be here. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, uh, but I've enjoyed working. We've got a wonderful staff here and wonderful coaches, and uh, it's an honor to, to be a part of the Husker family. You know, with regards to turf, yes, last year I think they anticipated replacing the turf. I think it's back on the docket to be replaced uh, next summer uh, to have new turf at Memorial Stadium. I think, you know, the reality is is that decision that was made officially to go to AstroTurf back when I played on it uh, prior to field turf and the en enhanced technology. It was really all weather-related and in trying to manage the field and, and you know, in the – sort of weather patterns that we have, it, it gets difficult in footing, and so I think there was some, some safety issues. But, but there's been some technology and improvement in natural surface. I can tell you our players really enjoyed playing at Michigan State in Oklahoma, and uh, it's easier on the body. So I think it's a fair question. It's worth looking into, and, and um, you've piqued my interest, and I think I'll ask that question. But, uh, um, you know, the field turf is, has been something that our staff's been able to manage. It also gives us some variability in terms of, you know, it's a whole lot easier to have a Garth Brooks concert, you know, when you have uh, the uh, artificial surface. And so uh, uh, th those will be important. And I forgot, Mike, what was Mike's second question, Greg? A, a spot where they could go listen to old games. and that's Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Actually, I asked that question too, because, uh, but I don't believe that, that our rights, when the Big Ten, when we joined the Big Ten, the Big Ten owns all of those rights, because I'm well aware we could take all these old games and I think we could have incredible, uh, but the Big Ten owns that inventory and that catalog of, of old games uh, because I, like you, uh, went on YouTube a couple times. I watched a, a game from 1982, uh, and I could not believe how physical that game was up front. Uh, I remember watching Mike Knox playing middle linebacker for us, and that guy was a player. He'd hit you. He would just and hit you. And so I would love to do that, Mike, but unfortunately I think our, uh, you know, our rights are, are in the hands of the Big Ten Conference. BTN, Trev, the week of the Oklahoma game, showed the 71 game. It's remarkable yeah. how well that holds up. It's still a very good college football game. A lot of old sports videos you're like, well, that wouldn't play. But that looked like a game you could see today. Well, it really is, you know, and, and uh, uh, I, I wish there was more access, like Mike said. I wish there was more access that the fans could have these this catalog of old games and enjoy those old moments and and big moments and and uh, and argue whether or not Keith Jackson pushed off 
uh, when he caught that touch. And I told Keith he pushed off, and he clearly knows he pushed off, but he said if it doesn't get called, it's really not a push off. So, um, you know, a lot of great history, not just our games, but across college football. Um, but, you know, it was really cool, and I, I don't mean to, but going back to the Oklahoma Nebraska rivalry and playing that game in Norman. It was interesting, Joe Castiglione, who I have a lot of respect for, he's an outstanding athletic director, been there a long time, and you know, he said the reality is, Trev, that, that this rivalry helped create what we know as college football. And when you think about that, I hadn't really thought about that, but the Nebraska-Oklahoma game really elevated the profile of college you know, football in general and uh, created college football. One rivalry, uh, two respected institution with a respected rivalry. So pretty cool to be a part of it. It would be great to relive all of it, but unfortunately we're not able to do that. How was the weekend down there? I, I thought it was wonderful. I, I really did. You know, it was really fun to listen to. Um, and I thought Oklahoma did a really nice job. I mean, part of it also was honoring the Selman family and the Selman brothers who I learned a lot about. Uh, Rick Bonas uh, spoke. And let me tell you something. Uh, Rick is an incredible speaker, and he had a moving, moving speech that um, it was a standing ovation, and he represented this university incredibly well. It was, it was a really proud moment for me in our football program, but um, it was just so well done and respectful, and everybody was there, Switzer, Bosworth, everybody, and what was not lost on me was Oklahoma uh, was celebrating a, a, a loss. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yeah. that's the magnitude. And we're going we're gonna to do some fun stuff next year when Oklahoma comes to town. Obviously, COVID uh, uh, disrupted, you know, that. And uh, so we're looking forward to it. It was a wonderful weekend. And uh, uh, what was wonderful about it as well is not that we lost the game, but to see our team um, walk into a hostile environment um, and, and fight. And, uh, you know, uh, we haven't always done that. And you got to start with that. You got to start with the will to be willing to fight. We'll worry about the nuances and this and that later. But if you don't have that, uh, you're not going to win many football games. And we have that right now. I agree. One more call before we go to the break. Back to Omaha. Chuck, you are up next with Trev Alberts. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Hey, Trev. Uh, hey, Chuck. So, my, yep. So my daughter interns for uh, Dave Ellis in the performance nutrition department. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks to, uh, to you for, for making her feel welcome. And uh, I, I, I know she introduced herself to you. So, uh, so, so thanks for making her feel better. Well, well, thank you, Chuck. That's really kind of you. You know, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have, we have so many wonderful people here. And, um, you know, we have some facilities that are spread out. We've got 650 student athletes, so we have quite a few staff members and coaches and support units. But um, the reality, it's people like your daughter who really make this, this place go. And it's people that, uh, you know, want to be part of something, want to serve young people. And, and Dave does a great job. You know, we're, um, you know, sort of the envy, I think, nationally in terms of sports nutrition and how we're fueling our bodies. I, it was not lost on me in watching that game. I've watched a lot of college football in very, you know, heat-oriented uh, games and all of the uh, student athletes who were cramping. And we've played in some really hot weather. Illinois. You think about Buffalo, Illinois, Oklahoma. I mean, those were really difficult games. And our players emerged out of that really, really well. And um, I thought hung in there. And I think that's a testament to Dave and, and Chuck's daughter and, and all of those who work within sports nutrition. A lot of hard work put in there by those folks. Chuck called us up on our Sports Only Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy it online at woodhouse.com. Phone lines are open, 402-413-2400. A lot more with Trev coming up next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. 
Welcome to Ag Answers. Today, we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. The Rural Fellows Program doubled their average number of participating students this year, putting UNL student interns to work in 17 Nebraska communities for the summer. Interns use their skills to get real-world experience on a variety of projects, from mapping out trail systems to creating promotional videos to researching and documenting local history. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every season presents a new opportunity. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, which is lean into every new opportunity. They focus on their roots and continue to stay tougher together with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperative leans on their values of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. Aurora Cooperative, tougher together. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride powered locally. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Don't let the cold winter worry you. As Nebraska's leading supplier of propane, you can count on Sap Brothers to keep your family warm this winter. You're like family. And your safety is the number one priority of Sap Brothers. When it comes to your propane needs, Sap Brothers has you covered. Visit www.sapbros.net slash petroleum to find your local Sap Brothers propane expert. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests, Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. <laughs> Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's Managed Print Services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's Lightning Fast Tech Support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's Managed Print Services at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. 
Chevy, find new roads. Hey, Husker fans. If you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. It's our monthly sit-down with the Athletic Director for the Cornhuskers, Trev Alberts, 402-413-2400, the number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. Volleyball's also well into their season, ranked 12th in the country. What's your impressions of John Cook's squad so far? Well, you know, I just love John, and, and I love his approach to leadership. And, um, you know, the biggest challenge he has is when you have a roster that's loaded with talent. And, you know, um, when the pandemic hit, obviously, and when student-athletes got an extra year, so he's got a roster that you didn't anticipate. Um, but what I love about it is when you have a championship team and a championship culture, it doesn't matter who you are, um, what year you are, you have to earn the right to start. And um, I loved, um, I understand what he was doing early in the year, playing a lot of different rotations, and I think he's settled on one. And, um, you know, a couple good matches coming up and, uh, you know, this weekend. But, but proud of our volleyball team. I mean, my goodness, um, they're, uh, they're going to be fine. Wyatt and Alma on our text line. Thank you, Trev, for listening to every Husker fan's concerns. Your down-to-earth person, your personality is very special. I love your transparency with the fans. Just wanted to say thanks. Well, that's Wyatt and Alma. Thank you, Wyatt. Uh, we're going to continue doing that. Um, I haven't seen uh, too many organizations that don't operate with transparency that are ultimately successful long term. So, um, listen, we're we're going to work really hard. We're not going to be perfect. We'll make mistakes here. Uh, but we'll try to do things the right way and in a way that the Nebraska fans are proud of. Let's go to Beatrice on the phones. And, Bruce, good evening, Bruce. You're up with Trev Alberts. Hi, Trev. How are you doing? I'm great, Bruce. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. Well, I'm an old guy, so I remember some of the old stories. And one of the things that I always chuckled about was uh, you told the story once about your dad. Hmm. He would say, why are you waving at the fans in the middle of the play? <laughs> <laughs> when you'd be actually you said no dad i'm signaling yeah. and as a dad of football players i can appreciate that story so i thought didn't know if you remembered it but it sure stuck with me over the years well i do remember it i don't know how long we have greg to, to tell the story but i was um, i was preseason all-american and i was on the butkus watch list and it was my first game my senior year and um, i had told my father i said i plan on winning the butkus award and I was, I was a little confident young fellow okay. back in those days, Greg. And, and uh, we played North Texas. And I remember looking at their roster, and the left tackle was like 235 pounds. And I thought to myself, well, I, I, might, I might win the Butkus in game one. And uh, play against this guy, he just so happened that he had amazing athleticism. He wasn't big, but he had great feet. And at the end of that game, I had one tackle, one assisted tackle. And my father wouldn't even look at me after the game. He was so <laughs> mad at me. And uh, he said, uh, let me tell you something, son. Uh, you keep playing like that. Not only are you not going to win the Butkus, you're not even going to start. And he said, in this whole idea of trying to get the fans in the game, you need to knock that off. And I thought for the first two days about what is he talking about? I, I, I don't try to get the fans. Well, North Texas, because they you know, were underwhelmed, they came out in an unbalanced line and then ran and snapped the ball real quick. So we had a call on defense. If you're the outside linebacker and it was unbalanced, you put both hands up to signal unbalanced. So every time it dawned on me on Wednesday, my dad thought every time I was doing unbalanced line, I was trying to get the fans in the game. And I called my father that evening, and I love my father. And I said, Dad, you know nothing about football. Don't ever tell me. And so we had a good laugh about that. So, so that was the story, and my dad um, never accused me of trying to get the fans in the game after that. That is fantastic. Bruce, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for getting that out of him. I appreciate that. Let's uh, go back to the phones. Jim and Lincoln, you're up next with Trev Alberts. Yeah, hey, Trev, how you doing? Doing great, Jim. Thank you. Hey, I, I really appreciate all that you've uh, done in the short time you've been here. Um, uh, the first 
the first thing that got my attention was when you uh, when you uh, said if you want paper tickets, you can get paper tickets because uh, you know some of us actually collect those. And <laughs> uh, a very nice lady sitting next to me at Michigan State, uh, they, they went ahead and printed you know the nice season ticket card stock, and the nice lady next to me parted with one of her nice ticket stock uh, for my collection. Oh, so, good. Uh, we we go to. Uh, we go to a lot of uh, Olympic events, and mm-hmm. sometimes we we uh, we take the uh, take the kids from church, the altar servers, and whatnot. And in the past, you know, we always uh, would uh, get some of those pop- popcorn box tops. And then I noticed this year that uh, that now there's a QR code on there. And when you go to the QR code, uh, like for the last several weeks. The uh, whatever that soccer game dollar thing was is still on there. So you know what? I'm just curious uh, what what went on with uh, you know eliminating the uh, the the general admission, the freebie that you would get from the box popcorn box tops. Because you know, like we we like to go to wrestling, especially, and you know, eight dollars to park at the Vanny and you spend some money at the concessions, and so the you know the free admission was always nice. So. Hmm. Uh, and I and I had sent an email uh, to your office a couple of weeks ago and didn't get a response. So I heard you on the radio on the way home, and I says, "Well, let's give them a call." Well, Jim, I appreciate the call, and I'm sorry that uh, I didn't get you an email back. Um, and I I don't honestly know the the answer to your question. I, I'm not aware of, uh, and I will I will have to. Uh, I'll talk to Bob Burton, who oversees concessions, and and I will try to. Let me get an answer, and um, somehow we got to either through this program and and uh, or through email, we'll, we'll we will get you a response. I apologize that I don't know the answer to your question, but I'm not going to try to fake it. I'm going to find the answer and get you uh, the right answer. Jim, appreciate the call. Dorothy Lynch Home Style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Back to the phones we go to West Point and Pete. Good evening, Pete. You're on with Trev Alberts. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, Pete. How you doing? Doing great. How about you? Oh, just on my way home from work, so I'm doing better now. <laughs> <laughs> Say, this is kind of short and sweet. I just wanted to call in, Trev, and tell you uh, thanks for being the person you are, number one, and thanks for taking the job as athletic director. Uh, I think you're going to do an excellent job. You sure got my 100% support. Hmm. And uh, the only other thing I've got is, it just kind of a burr under my saddle that we have Ron Brown is one of the best, the one of the best assistant coaches we've ever had in Nebraska since at least 1974 when I started listening to the Huskers. And he's not utilized. And every position he's ever coached has made a, a very uh, dramatic improvement, whether it's wide receivers and we have pro scouts coming in to, to see how our receivers block so well to coaching the tight ends to to the running backs he, he's made a tremendous difference in everywhere he's coached and and, and it just kind of a burr under my saddle a little mm-hmm. bit that he's not utilized but but i know you're not the coach but uh, i think husker fans would like to see ron brown back again but i just wanted to call in and say thanks for being the person you are and thanks for taking the job thank you pete i, I really appreciate that it means a lot to me and i appreciate your kindness i felt uh, a lot of uh, support and love from Nebraskans and Nebraska fans. And, and uh, frankly, it really encourages us and, and motivates us to work even harder. So I appreciate that. I will say uh, about Coach Brown, I obviously have a long history with him and, and I share your sentiment and uh, uh, love and respect, Ron. The reality is, is while he's not a full-time coach, he actually is moving closer in that role. He you know, is now a senior analyst and um, he is on the practice field. Obviously he can't you know, coach, um, actively coach, but but he is working very closely with the coaches. He's an analyst. He's offering his input, feedback, uh, and he's at practice every day. So he is having an impact, and perhaps down the road, you know, um, it further enhances in terms of his impact. But uh, he's moved into more of, of that, quote, coaching role um, as, as a senior analyst than he was originally with, with, with Scott's uh, coaching staff. So Ron's making a big impact in, in continuing to support and help young people. But I agree, every, every position that he's coached, uh, 
we're very disciplined and fundamentally sound, and, and those are a couple attributes that are really important to our program. Pete, thanks for the call. Buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Here are the numbers. You want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400. We have more with Trev coming up. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and They'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections. When it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Shop Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram during the Make This the Summer event going on now. The Ram is where fine form meets rugged function, designed to be durable, functional, and stylish, giving you the dependability you need for all your work projects and the luxury you deserve to get around for everyday driving. With a full lineup of all new 1,500, 2,500, and 3,500 Rams, we're sure to have one that fits your needs. Shop our full lineup online at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com or stop out and see us for a test drive in Blair. Walk these fields for 85 years. 
Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list, call JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn. Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Visit a participating Agco dealer between now and November 12th and get yourself entered for a chance to win a pair of tickets to the Huskers game with the Iowa Hawkeyes on November 26th. We'll throw in some pregame tailgate passes. See participating Agco locations across Nebraska. and You could be a winner this season. Welcome back. It's our athletic director show for the month of September. Trev Alberts is with us. Full boat of calls here, 402-413-2400. Let's start in Grand Island. And Doug, good evening. Doug, you're up with Trev Alberts. Good evening, guys. Um, Trev, thanks for coming to be the athletic director. I, I'm sure you're going to be uh, successful and help us become a little bit more successful in all the sports. Um, my question to you is, any thought been given about maybe putting uh, theater seats in Memorial Stadium? I know you might lose uh, some people. Uh, as far as attendance wise, but if you look at maybe the comfort for enhancing people's experience that might keep the sell out street maybe going a little bit more. And how do we get to where technology is that I can watch the game on TV and have a radio match up? You know, I, I always listen to our guys and turn down the sound on the national feed. Uh, but it's kind of frustrating when there's about a 10-second difference on that. And is there any way that we can look at getting that done where it matches uh, what the radio and the TV can be the same? Uh, I don't know if that's something for the Nebraska guys to talk about or is that something you can take care of or look into. But anyway, thanks yep. for Coming back to Nebraska, and uh, go Big Red. Thank you, Doug. Really appreciate it. Um, really appreciate the call. And, and um, yeah, that is something we can work on. And, and the reality is this. Um, I think it's part of a, a larger vision that – that, that we're starting. Uh, the reality is, you know, I, I look at Memorial Stadium as, um, you know, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's our museum in our state. And, um, you know, we, we need to modernize Memorial Stadium. There's a lot of hard decisions that need to be made, and quite frankly, um, I don't believe uh, that I ought to unilaterally in the corner office be making decisions uh, uh, on Memorial Stadium. And so what I've put together is I do have a community group that uh, uh, I think has representation across the state, and, and we're going to start diving into these issues. We need to take a look at what's the appropriate size. We need to understand what the fan amenities are. I think the red carpet experience has taught me a lot. I want to make sure that we're creating the next generation of Husker fans. Uh, I think there are Husker fans that would love to come to the game that feel like um, the pricing structure is outside of their capacity. So, you know, can we create a business model based on the demand in our premium spaces where we, our revenue remains the same, but we offer, you know, seating for fans who perhaps can't afford more than a $20 uh, ticket without a donation? We've got people sitting in certain places that make no seat donation, and the person sitting next to them is paying $5,000. So there's some inequity and, and unfairness in how we approach it. Uh, we need to make sure the infrastructure is in place 
and the fan amenities are in place that our fans uh, you know, want to continue supporting our team. The reality is, is Memorial Stadium's great. John Ingram has done a fantastic job with Memorial Stadium. I just thought it was time to stop, slow down. Let's take a holistic view. The world's changed a little bit. The pandemic has, has changed and helped uh, in certain areas. But this is the time to take a look at, you know, um, really looking holistically at Memorial Stadium and uh, looking at our concessions, looking at our food quality. How do we handle all these things? And so I've got a great group uh, of business leaders. We, we need to stop making emotional decisions and we need to make good, solid business decisions. We need to do the right thing. And so we're thinking about 10, 15, 20 years down the road. What does Memorial Stadium look like? What is the fan experience? Uh, we need to think about when people leave their house. Uh, and then they get to the stadium, parking including. Some of that's beyond our control. But we've got to make it intuitive to be a Husker fan. It can't be difficult for people to support us as best we possibly can. And I need help with that, and I've got a great group that's going to help lead me through it. won't happen overnight, uh, but we're going to create that strategy and business plan. And, and it all help handle the audio problem. The problem is there's so many distributions. People, some people have satellites, some people have cable, some people watch yeah. it off YouTube on a stream, and so everybody's getting it at a different time. It's hard to match up there audio too much of that. And there is an app. You can go on your app store and try to match it up to your TV stream, and, and that'll pull it in there as well. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. I know I see a bunch of calls, but we got to get one more break in. We're back to wrap it up with Trav next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple-stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory-trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. We're back in our 
Oscar Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer, 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Let's go out to uh, Colorado and Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. You're up with Trev Alberts. Hi, Trev. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, coming back to Nebraska. It's great to have you back. Um, I'm a season ticket holder, uh, alum, and I try to get back a couple times a year to games. Um, and I try to consider myself a rational man, but as I look at this season, I just feel like there's a curse we're trying to shake. And I mean this in all seriousness, but I really would appreciate if you could work hard to bring back Frank Solich and just thank him for all his years of service and give an opportunity to just close that chapter and so we could right or wrong. Jeremy, thank you so much. First of all, thank you for being a fan. Thank you for uh, making the effort to get the games and, and uh, for being an alumni and, and, and buying season tickets. And, and I certainly don't disagree. I love Frank Solich. And, uh, you know, Frank did so much. People forget, I think, because he was a coach here, what he did as a player here. I mean, Frank Solich uh, uh, had an awful lot invested here. And so, you know, I, I, I can't... Uh, uh, you know, I don't. I want to keep confidential our conversations, but I've I've talked to Frank several times and and uh, had lunch with Frank and and uh, just so you know, we're we would we would do about anything to have Frank back. Uh, we love Frank, and I think it would be uh, really cathartic for our fans to be able to to thank Frank. And and uh, but the reality is is that that Coach is a, is a private man, and and uh, you know he just has never been somebody that uh, feels real comfortable you know, in that environment. And uh, so we're going to keep working. Uh, We're going to keep trying. Um, We would love to be able to honor uh, Coach Solich in in some way and lift him up. And uh, I know uh, I I can tell you that Coach Solich is uh, is not bitter. Uh, He loves Nebraska. Um, He just happens to have some some personal, you know, desires that um, I think is important that I personally and and that we respect. And... uh, uh, but we'll look for ways to honor Coach. Uh, he'll always obviously be a really big part of, of the Husker family and, and, uh, but also need to respect uh, his desire to, to handle things in certain ways. All right, our last minute and a half. We have an update on the popcorn boxes. Okay, Try good. It again, right? The QR code is now working. Yes, uh, the QR code is now working. I think early on perhaps we weren't downloading uh, the information that we needed, and so I think they are active now. Get it downloaded. Uh, try it again, and if it doesn't work then, uh, then, um, then Greg Sharp's responsible I'll, I'll for uh, all the problems. <laughs> I will take it. Busy, busy weekend. You have an unbelievable amount on your plate this weekend. This should be a really special, fun weekend for all, all of Husker Nation. Well, it really is. I mean, when you think about it, and, and, and first and foremost, obviously, we've got a lot of competition, but it's homecoming for football. There's so many things surrounding. It's not just the athletic departments. It's our campus as well that's engaged in all kinds of things. Obviously, we have volleyball games, Nebraska Athletics Hall of Fame induction. And because of the pandemic, we have two classes, 2020 and 21. And you're talking about some of the most accomplished former student athletes that you'll ever imagine being inducted into our Hall of Fame. We've got the Husker Football Letterman's Association's reunion. We've got seniors from the 61, 71, 81, 91, 01, and 11 class. We're going to have all kinds of uh, former football players uh, at our... Uh, at our uh, football game. Uh, Obviously, men's and women's basketball, it's opening night. It's a free night, free to the fans, fun night. It's going to be exciting. So uh, just a lot going on. Uh, We're going to do our best to to get to every event, at least part of it, and enjoy it. Five seconds left. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Have a great time this weekend. Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Experience the highest levels of luxury at Woodhouse Lincoln, the Metro's exclusive Lincoln dealer. Our dedicated sales team is ready to guide you to your perfect vehicle. With a lineup of unique crossovers and SUVs, Lincoln offers insightful technologies, connectivity, and interior amenities, while you experience the highest sales satisfaction among all luxury brands. Visit Woodhouse Lincoln at 144th and Giles Road or online at woodhouselincoln.com. 
Maddie Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and a new flagship capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Woohoo! Business Technology 1, Network Downtime 0. Being a game winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Nebraska baseball received recognition for its 2021 recruiting class. Perfect Games Scouting Service ranked the incoming group of Huskers 20th nationally. The second top 25 finish for a Nebraska recruiting class, which last cracked Perfect Games top 25 in 2014, and they were ranked 25 in that year. On the world stage, Huskers women's basketball guard Jazz Shelley continues her work for Team Australia at the 2021 Asia Cup. She recorded a pair of rebounds and an assist in limited time in Australia's loss to China earlier in the day. Be sure to tune in to tomorrow night's Sports Nightly for Coach Held as he'll join Huskers football's weekly show with Greg Sharp. That is 7 to 8 p.m., which will follow the first hour of Sports Nightly. In the NFL, the defending champion Buccaneers made headlines today, signing all-pro corner Richard Sherman. Sherman, the uh, former Super Bowl champion, will look to bolster the Bucks' last-place pass defense, which currently yields 383 yards per game. In the final week of the MLB regular season, four teams are within a game of the final American League wildcard spot. In the third inning currently, it's now going into the fourth. The Blue Jays, who enter the night half a game out of the last wild card spot, lead the wild card leading Yankees three to nothing. That just changed to four to nothing just moments ago. Mired in a four game losing streak and clinging to that second AL wild card spot, Boston is trying to keep pace with both the Jays and the Yankees. They lead Baltimore one nothing in the fourth. Out west later tonight, the Mariners are a half game behind Boston as they're right in the mix for that wild card spot and they host the A's, who are just three and a half games back of that final spot at nine. 10 p.m. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt. This is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Black Shirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wide outs left, Lieber to the near side. In motion is two ray, snap back, turn, run the option to the near side. Adrian pitches it back to some more to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Jessica, I'm confused. We had, I had full phones like 15, 10 minutes ago. They're all gone. Nobody wants to talk to me. I What's step in for Trev. You and me sitting calling? here. What, we're what? here. <laughs> well, Crypto King's glad I'm back. He just said it in the chat. So, um, no, what a great, great hour. And we were just talking in the break. Trev could very easily fill two hours. And I love that he's willing to answer the, you know, any questions. And he wants to. I mean, he's, yeah. he's glad that, that fans are calling and he likes to hear from them and wants to hear their comments. And, and he's taking notes, you know, throughout. So he cares about what Husker fans want and want to see from this program. And, and you know, some of those issues like the, the box top on the popcorn. Sure. I mean, he made a call during the break to try to figure out what was going on with that so that he could answer that question. So, you know, again, he cares cares about what these the Husker fans uh, want out of this program. And that's that's his way, that's, and that's why this show exists, is for the fans have an avenue to get to an a, an athletic director, to a John Cook, to a Ryan Held tomorrow night, to the coaches. And that's what, you know, that's the beauty of this, is you can ask, ask a direct question to him. We tr- threw some texts. I'm sorry for the folks in the chat room tonight. We didn't get to some of the things they had for him. I think we covered some of the ones that they had brought up in there. But, yeah, we could have probably done two Three hours. Felt like a big red reaction going on when he was in here. For the yeah, last boy, time. it was nonstop ringing over there. Cool. Kept the boys awesome. busy uh, back there. Welcome to hour number two of Sports Island here on a Wednesday night. If you have some leftover thoughts about Trev, you can certainly share those with us uh, throughout the hour here tonight at 402 413 2400. He, he is really, and, and I, I think it was Wyatt and Alma's text who just said, You just come across Trev so genuine. Thank you for being a straight shooter with us, being transparent with us, telling it like it is. And I think I think that resonates with, with Husker Nation. Absolutely. And, you know, again, some of those questions, like I said, willing and a, or more than willing to answer any any phone call that comes in and is excited to hear from fans and, and wants to kind of – because he's still figuring all of this out, right? I mean, it's – he hit the ground running and has – done such a great job so far but it's you know he's still trying to figure out all the ins and outs even though he loves this program so dearly and and played for it and it's been his, you know been a part of it in some way shape or form you know for a long time but getting in and and running it is a different thing and learning all the ins and outs and those questions like you know that maybe he doesn't know the answers to he's trying to find those out as he goes but yeah I mean it's um 
no doubt he he the way he's running this program resonates with I think the employees here but also most importantly the Husker fans but also student athletes I mean I just talked to Austin Allen yesterday about it that he was you know got to be a part of the search committee that that brought on Trev and and he talked about that and you know no he said no doubt in my mind we got the the right man we know that he cares about us as student athletes so the student athletes feel it too one of the things Jessica that was in my notes but I didn't get to we just ran out of time was I wanted him to expound more on the red carpet experience. And and you and I have talked about I think this could really become a really cool tradition for Husker football and maybe other sports too moving forward, saving some seats for some underserved youth. And I think that there's a lot of thought that this is not just going to be a couple of games here and there. This could be something permanently put into place and not just for football moving forward and and he was also quick to point that out you know I can't take credit for that that is Lawrence Chatters and and that was his idea and he's kind of taken it and run ran with it and we've seen all those stories coming out from it each and every week and it, it is it's important to think about building that next generation of Husker fans and how many times we've talked about you know fans that remember that first game that fall in love with the Huskers from that first experience and there really is Nothing like it. I mean, I, I keep saying it because I'm new. I'm new to experiencing Memorial uh, Stadium on a Saturday, but now we've been to Michigan State, we've been to Illinois, and they're really. And I just came from Oklahoma, and there's just nothing like what you know we experience here in Lincoln on a game day. And so you get those young kids in that get this type of experience, and then hey, they they might love the Huskers for the rest of their lives too. So you get a new generation of them. But yeah, also just. God, what a neat experience for some of those kids that might otherwise never have that chance to get to come to a game. And with the 90,000-seat stadium, you you can find 500 seats to set aside to do that for every home game moving forward. I, I really I love it. I wish we could have got into it more with, with Trev in the last hour. We'll maybe save that topic and, and hit it up with him again later on. He did touch on it right at the end. What an incredible weekend we have coming up. Obviously, the game on Saturday night. But it is homecoming weekend. There's a lot of activities going on campus. There's going to be a big setup on the east side of the stadium on Friday, a thing called Cornstock. It's open, free to the public. Come on down. It's a lot of fun. They'll have some vendors out there selling some things and just kind of some spirit things going on. Also, if you come to Cornstock, you can poke your head in and listen to the Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, which are going to be going on on East Plaza. And as Trev mentioned, it's not just one class, it's two, because we couldn't induct the 2020 class last year because of COVID. And he's right. There are some incredible names. We heard from one last night in Kelsey Griffin. Eric Crouch is going to be there. Larry Jacobson's going to be there. I don't believe Jordan Burroughs is back. I think he's out. Jordan Larson will be here. Jordan Larson will be here. So the mm-hmm. first time we've seen her with her gold medal around. Yep. So, and, and there's some swimmers and, and some other athletes that are going in the Hall of Fame. There's some that are deceased as well, but uh, some of their family members will be here. That's at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, and that's come on down. Come on down and wander around Cornstalk and, and poke your head and listen to the induction. And then go check out G Herbo. Well, okay. <laughs> I did that for Andrew over there. He's coming behind the. But go watch, go watch Amy Williams squad. Well, you know, yeah. a little bit. Meet the men's the, squad a little meet bit. Meet the basketball teams. They're going to have a, a scrimmage, and I know that they would love to, you know, have some fans out there for that as well. And also, there's a lot of recruits coming in. Absolutely. And they're going to be at that that the basketball event, the opening night. They're going to be all throughout campus. So you know. Show them some love, and because I mean that's a huge part of you know getting those kids here is is this atmosphere. I mean I've talked to so many people. Just talked to Luke Grimer. That's the he was the Corn Husker conversation last week. He's the feature for Scott Frost show. He said it. You know he said the fans. It's the it's the fans. It's the atmosphere. It's you know why I wanted to come walk on here and instead of going to take a scholarship somewhere else, right. he wanted to play in front of you know this kind of atmosphere. So that's so hugely important when you're talking about bringing in you know the next generation of recruits as well. But yeah, they but this this these current teams love to have that support. So yeah, there's so you can just come on campus, stick around, walk around. You'll run into something going on. And there's a volleyball match. Volleyball match. Yeah. Yep. Six o'clock with Michigan Friday night, and, and right now they just uh, the first serve from Penn State and the surprising Maryland teams on BTN tonight. BTN's got some pretty good matches throughout the week. In fact, they have both Husker matches over the weekend: the Michigan one Friday and the Michigan State match on Sunday. Uh, so BTN's got some really good lineups coming up with volleyball here in the next couple of days. So just a really busy weekend coming up. Uh, for for the Huskers, all sports, and, and again, obviously, it centers around homecoming and the football game with with Northwestern on Saturday night at uh, at six thirty. Uh, 
something, and, and Treb mentioned this to you and I before the, the show began, and we did have a text about it, that the National Labor Relations Board uh, came out with a ruling late this afternoon saying that college athletes need to be treated as employees. Wow. This, whole, this along with NIL, Jessica, we're, we're in a different, amateurism is gone in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I mean, how do you even monitor that? I mean, how do you go about, you know, those hours and 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 they do they have the 20 hour clock yeah but i mean like how do you i guess police it a little bit more and you know i don't know i that that's going to be change things we already said it's forever changed with the nil but it's going to continue to change with uh with all of that you couldn't pay me enough to be in compliance i know you could say greg write a check i'm like nope i'm walking away i don't want it's kind of like uh, i don't want to work in fast food i would not want to do that i don't want to work in compliance that would be a mess yeah, so, I mean, I just get a headache thinking about all the things that they have to deal with and, you know, work through. There's so many, you know, and, and again, the there are certain laws and rules that it's here or there. Like, there was one for a while that, you know, a snack was something that you could only eat with your hands. or that you, So, like, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. Like, those kinds of things. Like, what was a snack and what was a meal? Like, that, that kind of stuff goes into compliance. And I'm just like, now you're throwing all of this other stuff? Headache City. Just Headache <laughs> no, City. No, thank you. Going on. Uh, also, uh, Husker Soccer in action tomorrow night. Not, not this weekend, but Thursday night. They're out. I think they're playing Sparty tomorrow night as well. So, uh, yeah, lot busy, busy, busy weekend for Husker Sports. It's going to be crazy. Um, and, and we got some folks from Ireland that are coming over, right? They're going to kind of, because it's Nebraska Northwestern yep. next year, so they're coming over. Both teams are going to be here playing this weekend. Yeah, I think they're going to come check out the new the new digs in the studio here. We'll get to chat with them. But, yeah, pumping up the trip to Ireland. We've talked a little bit about that. But, um, you know, I know they, they really want to pump up. that. There's a lot more to do out there. There's a lot of cool things that you can kind of plan a trip around and not just the, the football game. You can spend a few days out there. There's so many cool things to do. And so I know they're really excited to have Nebraska – you know, go play a game over there. And there's a reason why it remained Nebraska. And, you know, because yeah. it was Nebraska, Illinois, and now it's Nebraska Northwestern. There's a reason why they wanted Nebraska to come out to Ireland. One of this Husker fan base coming oh, yeah. over to Dublin. So that's going to be here before we know it. I mean, yeah. that, that's going to sneak up on us uh, when that gets here as well. All right. Uh, we have a, a, an hour ahead of us here on Sports Nightly. It's Wednesday. We're going to get into the Blitz, preview a couple of the Big Ten matchups for the weekend. A lot of conference matchups now starting to happen. Non conference for the most part, not totally, but for the most part behind us. So we'll delve into some of that. We'll have some open phones later on in the hour. If you have some thoughts about what you heard Trev say last hour, I'd love to hear him. I'd love to hear what you thought about the Husker Athletic Director and how he answered and talked about some of the topics of the day at 402 413 2400. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked it's free it's easy it's the law the blitz coming up next a DUI is everything you didn't prepare for you did not save for it you did not train for it you did not go to school for it you did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it it is not your life goal or a dream come true you have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch -a He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Detoast Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or DetoastSubaru.com. 
Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic you always dreamed of owning your own farm now you're living your dream and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together massey ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do making them easier to operate more comfortable to drive more versatile than ever massey ferguson gives nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field MERS Farm Equipment in Falls City, Nebraska. www.mersfarmequipment.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Dylan. Chevy, find new roads. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Barn Grill. See you there for the game. From vintage sneakers to bacon scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained text. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. In our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas, Acres Solutions for every field. It's that time of the week for us to take a little spin around the conference. Big Ten Blitz. 
Michigan. And here to talk about the Wolverines, Angelique Shengalis of the Detroit News. Michigan off to a perfect start so far this year, including surviving a scare from Rutgers last week, 20-13. to 13. I think a lot of people, Angelique, thought the Wolverines would roll over the Scarlet Knights. What, what impressions were you left with after that game? Well, it certainly looked that way in the first half, didn't it, Greg? I mean, when they start off with that 17-play drive, 15 of which were, were run plays, you're thinking, oh, okay, this is just carryover from the three previous games where Michigan was just running and running down the throat. But, you know, they, they have not fully explained what happened in the second half. But Michigan had four straight three and outs. And, you know, Kate McNamara, the quarterback, Jim Harbaugh, they just said, well, you know, they lost momentum and that happened. And, you know, I don't think it's a very satisfactory answer, but that's, that's all they kept saying is that they just lost their – momentum and, and one of the players um, said this week that maybe they did get a little lax and started looking ahead to Wisconsin so that, that might have played a small role but you know Rutgers is good and, and their defense is good and they and they certainly took advantage of of this lapse for them for the Wolverines yeah that that was my impression as well I think Rutgers might be a little bit better than some of us think and we may find out even more as we move through this season you mentioned Wisconsin let's flip it to that game uh, this this should be a big old fashioned Big Ten battle, shouldn't it? On Saturday, absolutely. I mean, you've got you've got the number one rush defense against a rushing offense that was one until last week, and then and still top five. And and I think it is going to be that kind of of, of really low scoring, very physical football. And and you know you're going to find out a lot about Michigan. I think they've had the luxury of four straight home games. And now they're going on the road. A lot of these guys have never played in front of fans on the road. Um, Kate McNamara stepped in at, at Rutgers at night game, but there were no fans there last year. So this is going to be really interesting to me to see how they how they react to that. And this is I think everybody knows what Camp Randall is all about. And and this is a team that's wounded coming off of that loss and uh, to Notre Dame. So it's it's going to be a classic definitely a classic hard-nosed game in the Big Ten. I, they've got the over-under set at like 43. That seems a little high to me with the way I these two so. teams play defense, but I guess we, you never know until you play the game, but don't you kind of expect a lower scoring affair? Absolutely. I really do, and uh, you know, and I, I think, you know, you look at the way Michigan has scored, and, and they have put up a lot of uh, points, but that was when they were able to run the ball freely, and, and that was clearly not the case against Rutgers last week. They showed, I'm sure, teams are picking up a little bit of a blueprint from what Rutgers did last week, um, especially in that second half. I mean, uh, exclusively in that second half. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that's what I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine it being a high scoring game. Maybe we're both wrong, Greg, but I yeah. don't think so. Well, that wouldn't be the first time. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wisconsin's kind of had the better of this the last couple of times these two teams have met. Has that been talked about much? And what about the psychological edge in this thing? Well, they have talked about it a lot. And Wisconsin has won the last two. But they've also won the last five times they've met in uh, at Camp Randall. And that, and that goes back to 2001. So it's, it's over two decades. They had a little uh, break in their, in, their, in their series. But... It is a tough place to play, and they got obliterated there in 2019. It was a Big Ten opener, and uh, I think everybody remembers how Wisconsin just ran all over Michigan. They had that Michigan had that early goal line fumble, and they never recovered from that psychologically. It seemed, and um, yeah, I mean they talked about that a lot, and you know I think this is they know that they this is going to be a serious test, the best test that they've had, and. Um, I think defensively, they really want to go in there and, and they want to set the tone. Uh, at least that's what Sean Nua, Michigan's defensive line coach, said this week. And, and a lot of the defensive players really want to go in there and, and, and quiet the crowd as, as quickly as possible. Oh, I can't wait for this one. Michigan at Wisconsin, 11 o'clock Central on Big Fox. Angelique Shengatos of the Detroit News. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you in Lincoln in a week. See you in a couple of weeks. Big Ten Blitz, Maryland. And here to talk about the Terrapins, who are off to a great start, is Scott Green from Terrapin Nation. Maryland 4-0 after beating Kent State last week, 37-16. Scott, tell me, what, what's been, what's been the, the formula so far for this football team to get off to a 4-0 start? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, it's been a great start, obviously. Um, I don't think a lot of people expected them to be 4-0, but I, I think the keys to, you know, this undefeated record are, you know, I think it all starts with Talia Tagovailoa. 
Um, you know, he's been absolutely spectacular so far this season. He's thrown for over 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, and just a single interception, which honestly was right off the receiver's hands and tipped by the receiver. Um, then, you know, you look at the defense, young, but much improved from a season ago. Um, lots of new parts there that have played really well. And then the other big key has just been a turnover margin. You know, you look at the takeaways. Um, they've created, I think, seven takeaways this season. They have a plus three turnover margin. And, you know, I think that's also been really big for them being undefeated. All right, here we go Friday night. Top five Iowa coming in. There has to be a pretty nice buzz around campus and around the program getting ready for this game that a lot of us are going to watch on national TV. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be a blackout game, um, you know, with the fans. Um, student support has actually been great so far this season, and I expect another student sellout again Friday night. Um, you know, it might be a little late arriving crowd just because it's the D.C. area and it's rush hours. It make it kind of tough to get there. Um, but I expect a packed house, a loud crowd. And, uh, I mean, this is, this is honestly probably the biggest game Maryland's had at home um, in a number of years, you know, with the top five opponents. And if they move to 5-0, it would be the first time since 2001 when they won the ACC. Yeah, I was going to say, it probably is one of the bigger games in recent memory. Lay out the keys to this one. I'm sure you've done a, a break into Iowa and looked at what they're bringing to town. What, what do you think uh, turns this game one way or the other on Friday? Yeah, I think, I think one key obviously will be, you know, for in Maryland's case, um, their offense is kind of can be feast or famine. I think they're going to have to feast on some big plays. Um, you know, really throwing the ball down the field to Demas and Rakim Jarrett. Um, hopefully get some touchdowns, you know, through the air that way. <clears throat> and then on defense, you know, they're, they're just kind of going to have to stop that rushing attack, um, you know, try to hold them to field goals. And then, as, uh, as I mentioned initially, you know, just winning the turnover battle. I, I think the team that wins the turnover battle on this one is going to have a real shot at winning on the scoreboard. Well, the Hawk is there. I know Maryland's so new to the league. Probably not a great deal of history between these two, is there? No, not a lot. But you know, Maryland has beaten Iowa, and you know they've played fairly competitive games in the past. So um, there's a bit of history, but no, not a, not a whole lot. All right, high scoring, low scoring. Where do you think this one lands? In the twenties, maybe with the two teams. Yeah, I mean, for Maryland, I think in the twenties, which would be you know more on the low scoring side. But I think somewhere in the neighborhood of say twenty four twenty, one way or the other. You know, like I said, I think it's kind of a toss-up, and it's going to come down to, you know, the takeover battle on who has more big plays. Oh, it should be a good one. 7 o'clock Central on FS1 Friday night. Maryland hosting Iowa. Scott Green with Terrapin Nation. Scott, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Big Ten Blitz, Indiana. And here to talk about the Hoosiers, Zach Osterman of the Indianapolis Star. Indiana 2-2 two and two after the win on the road last week over Western Kentucky 33-31. What is the mindset, Zach, right now? I know there were such high hopes going into the year. Probably didn't think they'd be 2-2 two and two at this point. No, I, I think they didn't. Um, and I think that last weekend was a little bit of a reset for them. And not necessarily maybe reflected in the final score, but certainly in some of the individual performances at Western Kentucky, the defense struggled a little bit, but I don't think this this team is going to doubt really, really hold on to the doubts for any lengthy period of time about its defense. I think it was much more needing to see Michael Penix look good again, needing to see that passing game look good again. I think those things happen. Um, and you know, I, I think I think the disappointment for Indiana maybe is not so much being two and two. I think this team did have high expectations and aspirations, but also respected the fact that. You know, this was a difficult schedule, and in particular, these first five games are difficult. I think it was more the manner of the two losses. You know, the, the sort of total system breakdown at Iowa, and then just how sloppy and sort of self-inflicted a lot of Indiana's wounds were against Cincinnati. And that's why I think the Western Kentucky game, while well, the final score might have been a little bit closer than fans would have liked, I think was was a really sort of valuable and welcome sort of reset moment for Indiana um, as a team. And now the question really is, is what they do with it. You know, I think what I wrote coming out of last weekend was it's a really important first step after a couple really ugly early season performances. The question is, can Indiana take further steps on from there? And this next step's a big one. Playing at Beaver Stadium at night, everybody remembers the classic game that these two had a year ago. I'm sure that's been brought up a lot. How do you size this matchup up? It's going to be very tough for Indiana. I mean, it's Penn State at night. You know, it's Penn State on a Saturday night. There's there's fewer difficult 
Fewer, there's, there's, uh, what's the, what, what am I trying to say here? There are fewer, more difficult tests in the Big Ten. Yeah. It may be the most difficult sort of environment um, on its merits in, in the conference to play in. And I think Indiana has respect for Penn State. There, there's been a lot of, you know, trying to sort of say, hey, last year's game was last year. We're not, we're not trying to relive that. If, if anything, frankly, I think there have been times in the last couple of months when it felt, it felt a little bit like maybe Indiana was downplaying last year a little bit too much, trying to move on from last year a little bit too much. And I'm not sure that's, that's helped them at times. But I do think they, they see Penn State as a different animal here, different offensive coordinator, different Sean Clifford, quite frankly. Obviously, fans in the stadium at Beaver Stadium as opposed to basically no fans in the stadium at Memorial Stadium, a different environment. But, uh, you know, this is also a team that's already played Iowa at Kinnick. It's played Cincinnati at home. So, at very least, and, and, you know, I said this between before Cincinnati going into the Cincinnati game, and I think it actually was probably true for a while until Indiana's performance kind of twisted on the, the targeting penalty. But I think that Indiana, at very least, is a team that's had to confront its flaws. And in a way that, you know, Penn State maybe has a little bit, but maybe in other ways has not. Indiana's, you know, gotten bloodied up a couple of times, and I don't think they're going to be afraid of this environment. But you can be ready for it. You can be sturdy for it. You can be fortified against it. You can play well and still lose because it's Penn State on a Saturday night in Happy Valley, and that's just how it goes. Zach, Indiana wins if they do what Saturday night? I think it's, and I'm going to be saying this a lot this season, but Penix is so important to Indiana, and I think anybody who didn't appreciate that before certainly has to appreciate it now, seeing how the Hoosiers struggled while he was struggling. Um, the flip side to that is, you know, Indiana's kind of had a, a hot and cold relationship with Sean Clifford. He really hurt them in a seven-point Penn State win at Beaver Stadium a couple of years ago. Indiana really had him out of sorts and gave him a lot of trouble defensively in the IU win in Bloomington last year. I think it's a game of, number one, which Michael Penix, can Indiana get on the field, you know, quick, and, and can, they, can, they, can they get him in that rhythm, get him in that comfort zone that he found at Western Kentucky where it wasn't just that he was, you know, he's passing the ball well against a bad defense. It's that all the sort of mistakes and the sloppiness and the any any sense that he might be gun shy after his injury, all that stuff just was not apparent at all in Bowling Green in a tricky, if maybe you know, less difficult road game. Um, and then how how much can Indiana's defense affect Sean Clifford when I think he is playing inarguably the best football of his career? It seems like the offensive coordinator change, the scheme change, have really benefited him. And I just think, you know, like I said, I feel like I'm going to be saying this all year. I said this before the, the Cincinnati game, too. But I think it's a game of quarterbacks. And if you told me right now that Indiana's going to get something closer to vintage Michael Penix and that Indiana is going to force Sean Clifford to have a bad day, then I'd be a lot more willing to entertain the idea that Indiana can win this game. Indiana at Penn State, Saturday night, 630 Central on ABC. Zach Osterman of the Indianapolis Stars. Zach, we appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, as always. Big Ten Blitz. Zach and all of our contributors appear with us on our Sports Nightly Hotline, brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. All right, we're going to open the phone lines back open for you. 402-413-2400. Jessica will rejoin me next. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto family kickoff contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. 
Contact your Valley dealer today. There is no place like Nebraska, and there's no place that treats you like home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane. Servicing your farming equipment and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. There's a call on the field for a quality seed specific to where you farm. Make the right call with Prairie Valley. With local research in eight regions throughout Nebraska, Prairie Valley performs with their locally specific hybrids and varieties while achieving the highest quality and yield. No matter where you farm in Nebraska, Prairie Valley has the seed for where you are. Find a local dealer and learn more about the seed for where you are at prairievalleyseeds.com. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. UNL has been named one of the best schools for veterans for the fifth year in a row. The ranking on the Military Times Best for Vets survey reflects the hard work of Nebraska's Military and Veteran Success Center, serving military dependents, veterans, National Guard members, active duty troops, and many Husker students in the reserves. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots, and we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Aruski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset, day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. You trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance. 
all without spilling a drop of your ice-cold Bud Light. Welcome back to Football Sports Fans. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. They have 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every feel. Welcome back to the program. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. If you want to be a part of it, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Some pretty interesting matchups in the league. Andrew wanted me to ask you your thoughts on a couple of these games. Okay. What? Who you who do you like in some of these Big Ten matchups? Oh, you're trying to get my okay. He's trying. To, I was. I thought you were talking about volleyball. Oh, you're trying to get because I'm the, the leader on the board. No, he's we don't trying know to that get for some sure. Insight. We haven't updated the standings. We yet. know it. We'll, we'll I've do, won three out of the four we'll, weeks. It's all right. We're good. Actually, we'll do four that out of the five. We'll I update believe. the standings tomorrow. No, there are some really good matchups. I mean, even the Friday night game, Maryland, and, and as our contributor said, he goes, "This is the biggest football game at Maryland in years." I mean, here comes number five Iowa. In there, Maryland's undefeated. I mean, that's going to be a really good ma- game on Friday night. Yeah, and I think we were talking it. I think in the break with with Trev when he was here, just about how close some of these games are, how tight you know from top to bottom. A lot of these teams are in the Big Ten. You could win them or you could lose them. And and again, I think we heard a lot of it talked about yesterday with the defenses. The all of the defenses have been pretty solid this year. So yeah, it's just there's. So many times you can, I mean, you can pick one and who knows what's going to happen. I mean, how many, what was that game? We all picked Northwestern, I think, or when it was a couple weeks ago. Well, it was Duke Northwestern. That one we were split a little bit. There, on. I thought there was a Big Ten game that we all picked someone and anyways, it ended up and going it went the other way. Yeah, yeah. So now I've drawn a blank. But it, there's just, again, yeah, there's a, a lot of different things can happen any given Saturday. The, the Iowa-Maryland game is probably, the, to me, the most intriguing game of the weekend. And number two would be, because I think it's going to be a fun, fun game, Michigan and Wisconsin, too. We play Michigan in a week, so obviously you want to scout that a little bit. But Wisconsin needs a win in a bad way, or they're going to have three losses before they get out of, out of the first month of the season. They cannot score. score. They can't no. score. I said that last week on the picks. I don't know. I mean, again, I know the defense is stout, but they it doesn't do any good if you can't even get any points on the board. I have some really interesting out-of-conference games that we're going to be picking in the pick segment tomorrow night as well. Cincinnati, Notre Dame. Yeah, that one will be a fun one. Baylor, Oklahoma State. I mean, Andrew, I'm trying. I'm trying to get some answers here. <laughs> trying to get a little... She's not revealing. I, I'm not, I'm not going to give anything away. You'll have to tune in for the picks. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow night. Jeremiah will jump in here. We'll have some fun uh, with that segment. Um, Jason on our text line. Hey, Greg, I miss the AD show. I coach high school football. Good for you, Jason. But I was wondering if Trev, anybody asked Trev about a quote I heard him give this week. Quote, apathy is the enemy of excellence. It was a very profound statement and shows some perspective. Love the show. I don't, no, we didn't, that did not come up. That does sound something like, Trev would say, I think, but he, that did not come up. To no, me. nobody asked about that, but um, yeah, I mean that that's, that is a great quote, and that, I mean again, I think it just goes to show you that it's not a bad thing that Husker fans care so much because you there are a lot of um, programs across the country that would kill to have half the amount of care uh, from their fan bases that you know the Huskers have so I, I don't think it's a bad thing I think that's probably what he was saying with that quote it's not a bad thing that Husker fans care so much Absolutely. care so deeply about this program the passion is there Jeremy from far farwell said I love listening to Trev Alberts talk I think everybody's raising their hands so yes it's just it's a pleasure to listen to him talk about a lot of issues and we got into a lot of things tonight we did not get into the the, the NIL or the National Labor Relations Board's ruling today that college athletes can be considered employees. I mean, the, it's an interesting time to be an AD, and he's going to have to shuffle through a lot of these things. Yeah, and I think he's, he, I mean, he is constantly working. I mean, he is all the time, you know, again, trying to navigate, learning everything, you know, all the ins and outs here, what's needed. You know, I think the last time we had had him on here, he hadn't, I think, had full conversations about baseball, softball yeah. updates. And that I think that was asked, and he was going to look into that and some of those other things. That So he's going to continue to kind of look into the things here. But then it's also you have to stay on top of everything that's going on just with the all of college athletics and the NCAA and, and you know, the college football playoff and the Big Ten Alliance, you know, all these things that you have to kind of, you know, stay it on top of and manage because you are leading leading this department and, and this program and wanting to kind of make sure that it's all in align with alignment with 
where this program needs to be. And it means a lot to him because it's his alma mater. Yes. It's his school. So he put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears when he was a player here. And so it means an awful lot to him. Rudy in Florida continuing on some texts. Hey, Greg, the last Husker game I attended was the Hail Mary Northwestern win. I hope we uh, do a little bit better on Saturday. Um, and the last thing from Rudy was I think Nebraska hit a grand slam with Trav for AD. Go Big Red. Yeah, I think Agreed. I think most people, that's the consensus. What's happened in the chat room? Did I miss anything with that group? I've been trying well, to peek the, in there tonight. The OGs are here. Um, a lot of them are in here tonight. Um Andy, we have a Missouri fan, by the way, that tunes in because he said that's this, fine. this show is so good that he wants to tune in for the, the show in the chat. Um, but there was a question about the penalties um, earlier, about how many penalties that the offensive line had in the second half. But there were no penalties, period. You looked that up. So that, that's a massive improvement, too. Well, the first thing I looked up when you asked me that is we had six penalties for the game, and I would have thought it was more than that. But they were all in the first half, and those procedure penalties were early. Same thing happened in Oklahoma. Nebraska right. settled down and settled in. Yeah, except for the eight was on the first drive. Right, <laughs> right. And so one, and it's good that they settled in. You just wish they could settle in earlier. Shouldn't be an issue being back home now for the next two games. Absolutely, yep. Uh, so that was something. And then another thing that was brought up was that it was about a year ago today, Crypto mentioned this, that things were kind of starting to be figured out about that the Big Ten was going to play football a year yeah. ago. I couldn't imagine – being an athlete during that time, thinking, are we going to play? Are we not going to play? Like, what are we doing? They were the only sport to play, too. No right. soccer, no volleyball, just football played in the fall. Basketball did get started pretty close to the normal time for basketball. I'm just so glad we're kind of back to some kind of sense of normalcy. Kelsey Griffin actually brought that up when I talked to her last night about it. It looks like, you know, the fans are back, you know, full support better than ever, it seems like. And I do think there is a different appreciation after a lot of fans couldn't, you know, attend games, especially in, in normal fashion a year ago. So it's crazy to think that a year ago where we were. <sighs> Unreal. God. It's, it's, in some ways, it seems like it's a lot longer than a year ago. In other ways, it, it doesn't. Buckle up. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Dale and Scott's Bluff, hang on. I need to get a break in. We'll take your call out of the break. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too. Making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch Scratcherowski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Finally, it's time to tailgate, to find your spot in a sea of red, to get together with family and fans, and to share what makes Husker football season the best. This season, share Valentino's tailgater tradition with their big red double jumbo deal and get two one-topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours at Valentino's.com. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red! Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDaves.com for all your catering and online ordering needs 
or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today we're tackling the issue of GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. GMOs may sound scary, but they're actually benefiting our environment and consumers. That's because GMO crops help solve specific problems like insects, food waste, and droughts. By selecting good traits from one plant or organism and adding them to another, farmers are safely using science to produce high-quality foods better than ever before. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. Final few minutes of sports out let's head out to the panhandle. Scott's Bluff and Dale. Good evening, Dale. Hey, thanks for taking my call, you guys. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, you know, I'm glad to see that Scott was, I don't know, upset or called out the offensive line with their mistakes and their penalties. And but anyway, was it, am I right that was it 95, maybe 94, back in the heyday of the pipeline, that we went through a whole season with no penalties on the offensive line. I don't know if it was Maybe no penalties. I know they had a year where they didn't give up any sacks. They gave up no sacks in one of those seasons. I don't know about the penalties. I'd have to look that up. <laughs> oh, I think Dale's phone acted up on him there. So, Dale, uh, I'll look that up. I don't think it was penalties. I think it was no sacks. But Brendan would know. Brendan played I was going to say, let's call up Brendan. Can we phone a friend? <laughs> yeah, phone a friend. <laughs> Brendan played on the 94 team. I think, I want to think, I want to say it was a 95 line, which Brendan was gone. He left in 94, graduated in 94. But there is something. I don't think they gave up any sacks. But we'll, we'll check on that, Dale. And, and you're right. Nobody wants to hear, but it's true that it's an inexperienced group. It's just, it's a young group that has not played together. And I think we're seeing their growing pains. Yeah, it just takes time to build chemistry on a line, and especially you got one guy that's played significant time in front of a crowd, in a crowd. Um, so, yeah, I think they'll continue to grow and, and get better, but we heard him also say that, hey, they could shuffle some things around. We might see some different guys out there on Saturday. So, you know, definitely not going to be okay with, you know, the – the O-line play has got to get better. They've said that. And so if they've got some other guys in there that they think can get the job done a little bit better, they're going to do that. So we heard them say they're going to shuffle it around. Maybe we could see some different lineups, some different guys getting some opportunity on Saturday. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think that everybody in that room, they want to they be better. Like, you know, it's not like – but it just takes time to get to that, to that right. point. Right. What do you think happened to his phone? I don't know. That was bizarre. Sounded like a weed eater started. Yeah. At the like something, end. some engine fired up. Maybe like, a generator or something fired up in the background. Zer. Doug in Norfolk says, I think they had no holding penalties. That that could be. I mean, Brendan will know. Uh, we'll, you see Brendan on Fridays, don't you? I, yes. I'll see him on Saturday. Yeah. He'll know. I, I don't remember. There's I need something to write that like down. That. I'll ask. Um, yeah, it was something like that. It was either no sacks or no holding penalties or something like that. But point taken from our caller from Scott's Bluff that, you know, when you play clean up front like that, it certainly helps it out. I thought Fort Logan Smothers came into the game and they were driving. They had the ball at the 40-yard line of Michigan State and it was back-to-back -back procedure penalties. And all of a sudden you have first and 20 because you're at the 50-yard line. We ended up not getting a first down and had to punt. Yeah, and again, I just, the way Adrian Martinez played on Saturday, it's just, I, I mean, you're going to hear Austin Allen talk about it in the Cornhusker conversation, but just call him a warrior. I mean, he wanted to get back out there, and then he saved a lot of plays from potentially being negative as well. Um, so, and, and that's another thing. That O-line wants to protect Adrian Martinez. They do. So, I, I, do. I do. I fully believe you're going to see some improvements. Now, does it all get better on Saturday? Probably not. It's probably going to continue to take time. But I do think we'll see improvements on Saturday. That puts a wrap on tonight's show. Thanks to Jessica, to Andrew, to Tim, to Mike, to all of you for being a part of this one. Tomorrow night, our football show in hour two. We'll have an open hour in hour number one. Come on back and join us tomorrow. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. 
Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with games.